hello guys and welcome to another video today i'm going to be sharing with you my lightroom workflow how i edit my wedding photos and other photos that i take let's jump right into lightroom so i have my lightroom opened here and this is the, basically the default interface so these are the pictures i want to edit and so the other files you see around here the SMP files they are just written because I rated these images in fast raw viewer which I've discussed in a video which I'll link in the description in below <coughs> so these are the files these are the files I will be editing in Lightroom so once you are in the library model just go to my image folder and then drag the first image into that import box so you see it loads all the images here let's say we have um, if i click on check or it will select all the images so we have 43 images here if i want to select them one by one i will just uncheck all and then double tap one of the image to go through them one by one so i can go through one after the other and if i want to select this i'll just click on including import i'll just type p so that i can select them and add it to the pictures i want to edit so these are the pictures i want to edit i've already selected them from the fast draw viewer and so to make this quick i'll just import all of them and then select some of them and then edit for you to have a feel of so basically the images are imported into the um, into lightroom and then we are in the library model so if you want to edit this picture you have to go to the develop model which is here so you can just click on the d or the develop model you can just type on the keyword shortcut d to select the develop model so let's select it with the mouse now most of the time what i do is i hide all these items around here because my laptop screen is already small for me and then i don't want to be um, limited to a small working area so i'll just click on this and then it will hide that part then click on this arrow here it will hide this part for me too then when i click up here so now i have a bigger working area or workspace so as you can see here um, this image if i want to show you the detail of this image it was taken at 24 millimeters f4 with a 24 to 120 uh, mm lens on a nikon v750 so for those who want to know so basically if i want to edit this image this is what i do now if you take a look at this area you will notice that i have um, rearranged this if you haven't rearranged this you will notice that it is different from what i have here and it doesn't matter i just decided to rearrange according to what i use first so that it will be easy for me when i'm working okay so i'll click on remove chromatic aberration then if i want to correct um, and remove vignetting on this image i'll just type I click on the enable profile correction so you see when i turn this off and on look at the huge change we have achieved here and the reason why i put this lens correction first here i want to be able to start correcting my image from the beginning you see when i uncheck this and I, unche I check back you notice that there is a huge change in light difference and i don't want to finish editing my pictures before realizing that i have not checked the enable profile correction once i click on that again i would have to go back and re-edit the picture so i want to get it right from the beginning so with this picture for instance i want to crop it so that i can have an even surface so let's say something like this so we have equal sides here and then i'll just type on enter then let's move to the basic side basically most of the time when i edit pictures i use the basic after i've moved from the lens correction and most of the items here i don't usually touch them unless of course it's important for me to do that in the image so in this image i've realized that there are too many highlights and the image looks a little overexposed so let's bring down the exposure a little bit so let's keep it at negative 0.4 so now let's reduce the highlight 
as you adjust you make sure you are looking at the image to see what I just so this is before and you drag down and now to me this image lacks contrast so I'll increase the contrast a little more and then add some darks now this dehaze feature is one of the best features added to Lightroom recently and if I increase the dehaze you notice how it has brought back some colors in this image but this is too much so we adjust it a little just a little so that we get that punchiness of the image then I adjust my vibrance a little more so basically that's it I'm done with this image and you can see before and after before and after with just some small checks we have this now basically I'm done with this image now after getting this I'll go back to the images then go through and select the ones that looks like this image so that I can just copy the settings from one image and then paste it on the others so let's select all the decoration pictures so all the decoration pictures and then you click on sync so when you click on sync you select the parameters that you want to apply to all the other images so for instance I've unchecked the transform I've unchecked a lot of things and you realize that I only use basic and then um, the lens correction but I've checked all this one just because I don't want to come back and, and check all those things but if you are doing it and you don't want any part of copied onto another image make sure you uncheck that so I click on synchronize and Lightroom will synchronize the settings with all the images then now I just I can go through the images and the effect is already applied here so this is the before and this is the after this is the before and after so if I want to make some little adjustment to this I'll just increase the shadows because I feel like this part of the image is becoming too dark if I need to crop I'll just crop a little in and then hit enter and basically that's it you go through the images one by one and then you apply you can see straight from the synchronization this image is good enough for me so as you can see this image is highly overexposed you can see in the dresses you can't see any details there and so I selected this image so that you can edit together and then learn a lot of things so this image is where I suppose like I said earlier so first thing that I would do is go to the lens correction correct for chromatic aberration then enable lens profile correction if I want that because I shot this image on a 70-200 Tamron G2 I don't know why Lightroom doesn't recognize this lens automatically but I have to go back and then select from this part so I will not be needing this enable profile correction on this image so I wouldn't bother myself but when it comes to yours just go to you find the lens you use over there and then you apply to it okay so let me jump straight to the basics so the basics this is too overexposed so let me reduce the exposure just a little bit down bringing it down so let's say 0 0.90 negative 0 0.90 that is looking okay we are getting some of the details back in the shot and then let me reduce the highlights so that I can get the details in the dress now look at this when I take this highlight zero look at the dress look at the portion of the dress and then when I bring it down look at what I'm getting I'm not getting all the details but this is okay for me to work with for now and you can see this image is looking um, little flat it's looking flat to me so I will be increasing the contrast and then decreasing the shadow uh, the blacks a little bit then now we are getting some kind of feel and one thing I always do is when I edit pictures I make sure I'm uh, checking the before and after so this is the before and after before and after so I'm using the before to guide me to get the after I always try to get a picture closer to what is what was happening at the scene so I don't go overboard by changing things hugely if you go through my Instagram profile, you notice that I'm having natural tones, as you see. I don't worry myself with color grading a lot. You can do that 
which is perfectly fine. But I just don't like to spend time color grading an image that I feel is not my style. Okay, so let's increase the shadows a little bit now. When I take this down, you see the effect. When I bring it up, you notice how it is affecting the skin tones and then bringing out some details in the hair and other parts of the image. Now this image, let's increase the vibrance small and then dehaze it a little, just a little. I think plus seven is okay. And then now I'm getting two warm colors. So I'm increasing my tint a little bit up. Now, just to make things clear, there is no right or wrong way to edit photos in um, Lightroom. The only thing is that you have to know what you want and then know which ones will help guide you first. So for instance, I know that when I start with my lens correction, I can go to the basics and work from there. If it doesn't work before I move to other parameters, so I don't necessarily have to go and use difficult items on the uh, panels like the curves those split tonings and all those stuff before coming back to my basics the basics are very necessary to me they are very important to me so i use those ones first and by using only the basics you can you can see a huge change in the image and editing and i think if you follow along as well you'll be able to get similar results now that we've achieved this back here in the greens these green colors are not looking natural to me so i'll go to my hsl color panel so the hsl or the color panel now i'm looking for green so like i showed in my previous video on um, how to achieve photo look i'll just click on this small icon over here and then hit the green select the green area so i want more greens to enter into this image so you can see the difference if i turn this off and on off and on you can see a huge difference but this is also affecting this don't worry we're correcting that in a few moments because the yellows has also increased it has changed our gold to yellow so let's bring it down we still have our greens over there now now i want to increase the saturation of the green so that it becomes a little more popped up so just select the green and increase it i want to get more yellowish feel in the chair and then in the wood and let's go back to the hue too as well i want to get that gold feel so let me just bring the yellow down a little so that i can get the gold feel now let's look at the total before and after of this image so this is the before after before after if i were to be doing this without teaching you guys this would take me roughly let's say 45 seconds to one minute so if you practice this at home and then you are editing you will not be spending five or ten minutes on this image okay so basically i'm done with this image so if i have similar images like this one i'll just select and then sync it throughout click on the sync and then those images will all be affected with the same settings so let's see let me select one last image and work on as you can see this the highlights are overblown and so we don't get any details in the dress at all so what do we do first just bring the highlight down and see the result look at the drastic change just by bringing the highlight down look at the result we are getting then this point i'll just increase my contrast a little and then make sure that i'm adding some things to the image this is looking great already some vibrance to it and let's look at the before and after before after before after one question i get asked a lot is do i use presets yes when i started i tried to create presets for my wedding photos but i realized that it was just a waste of time because whenever i go out to shoot the images vary from one place to the other so when i come back and i apply the preset it doesn't actually work for me so i just decided to forget our preset so when I edit pictures, I edit from the go. I start everything fresh and end fresh. Unless, of course, I'm editing a whole lot of pictures from the same wedding. Even though I don't create presets, I just sync them and then take it from there. You have watched this tutorial and then something is not clear to you, you need further explanation. 
don't worry just feel free leave a comment in the comment section below if you found this video useful if you learned a thing or two from this just consider giving me a thumbs up if you haven't already subscribed to this channel um, i promise you there will be a lot more great content coming on on this channel so make sure you subscribe so i don't miss any of my future videos i'll see you in the next one